Today on NuggetCast, AWS in the real world. How can Amazon Web Services help people and companies to keep their data and networks safe and secure? It's a little more than just servers in the cloud. Welcome to the first online meeting of the... We really need to come up with a name that is good, huh? Something big and awesome and powerful, like, like the Institute of Terror. Yes, the Institute. That's kind of big to put on a T-shirt. How about we just call it IT, nice and short. It will be awesome. People will fear us. And <laughs> just wait until Garth hears about the Institute of Terror. <laughs> I have a very special assignment for all three of you. What you need to do is take them down. Okay, you need to take them, do you know who I mean? The evil people, we are evil. You need to take them down, you know, the people who constantly try to crush us and stop our plans from world takeover. Yeah, them, they are into technology. When you get into the building, go and find the server room. Then, find all the servers. There will be lots of servers, because they are a big company of technology, so they will have servers. And we will destroy all the servers. <laughs> Our IT meeting is over. Done. Hang up. Close lid of laptop now. Welcome to NuggetCast. I'm your host, Steve Barth, and today we're exploring AWS in the real world. Now, a big goal for individuals and companies is to keep their data safe and secure. You never know who may be trying to get to it. Last November, you may remember, we did a NuggetCast episode introducing you to how Amazon Web Services work. Remember this? <laughs> if you don't, go back to our November 2013 episode to learn AWS basics. But how does AWS work in the real world? Most people think that AWS is simply a web service hosted by Amazon. But I had a chance to sit down with Jeremy Chara when he was out for our most recent trainer, Palooza. And in our chat, I discovered there's so much more to it than that. Jeremy Chiara, welcome to NuggetCast. Hey, thanks. Now, this is really weird because we're actually sitting in front of each other. There's not a Skype computer in between us. Yep, yeah, I've made the trip to Eugene. Happy <laughs> to be here. Thanks. So we're having our Trainer Palooza event, and that's where we bring all of our trainers in to have meetings and, and do filming of this sort. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being here in the studio with us. Yeah, no problem. So today we're talking about AWS, and there might be a lot of misconceptions about AWS. So when I think of AWS, should I just be thinking of servers in the cloud? Mm. That's actually where I was 10 years ago. Uh, actually, a friend of mine sent me an email about AWS, and he's like, dude, you gotta check this out. And so I, I go into AWS and, and uh, spun up a server, and, and that was it. I was like, wow, there's, there's a server in the cloud. That's, that's cool. I didn't call it the cloud back then. I was just like, okay, and I shut it down. And for years, never thought another thing about it. Um, AWS, I mean, think of it like stuff in the cloud, like like services in the cloud, like what, whatever, you, whatever you want in the cloud, uh, is, is possible with AWS. I mean, think of it like, um, let's just take one, like um, S3. S3 is storage in the cloud. That's just one, one thing where you can upload whatever you want, essentially without limit. They replicate it between multiple data centers. You've got stuff, data in the cloud. And a lot of people don't even know, for instance, S3, it's, they call it a bucket. You can put stuff, you know, let's just say, I put my entire, <laughs> kind of dangerous, but my entire family photo collection in, in the cloud. Um, I can even serve that from S3 as a website. I don't even have to spin up a server in the cloud. Uh, I can do it right from S3. Or, or there's even uh, Glacier, where like super, super cheap storage. To, you, know, you can back up, like for instance, my friend lost everything at his house because his little NAS at his house crashed. He could have backed that all up to AWS Glacier in the cloud. Okay, so 
servers and storage in the cloud. That's that's what AWS is. <laughs> you know, you're doing exactly what I did. It's you're still thinking with the wrong mindset. It's it's everything in the cloud. So uh, so think of it. Think of it this way. Um, a lot of the stuff that people are doing are becoming more and more cloud-based. Uh, for instance, uh, the wireless vendor I use now for all my wireless installs uh, has a cloud-based controller. Now, it, they, don't, they don't give you the control, they give you a, an ISO image and they say, okay, load this on whatever server you want. They don't even say cloud-based, but I can, I can put that in the cloud uh, and now I can run all of my wireless controllers, not just from one building, but let's say I've got 50 offices uh, with my company, I can actually run them all from this single wireless controller that's sitting in Amazon Web Services where I control it. So I'm not even I'm not even thinking server in the cloud anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's where my wireless controller is because that's that's how I've set it up. But you still need local servers to run things, right? Well, a lot of people think that. Well, how do you how do you run the office without having a server there? Like, what's your DHCP or your DNS or you know some of the some of the stuff that you have in the office? Uh, but start thinking about it. Well. My firewall can do DHCP. My, you know, my my uh, firewall can do. I, I can make that all just a, a little appliance that I throw in the rack that hosts my internet connection anyway. Um, and I and I think and here's here's where I think it's going. AWS has tipped their hat. Um, I think they're after world domination, and it's all around one product line. AWS Workspaces. Really? So so Workspaces is virtual desktops in the cloud. Again. If you just see it as that, pointless. It's like, why would I, why would I want Windows 7 running in the cloud? Why, it seems like I, I can't, why would I use that? Well, it's virtual desktops in the cloud. They're after world domination because now people are like, wait a sec, if my desktops are cloud-based, then that means I don't have to have the server sitting here in the site anymore. So some companies may not even want a virtual desktop environment. Well, what do we do for those guys? <laughs> I'll take CBT Nuggets, they don't. Uh, why, because they have Macintosh computers everywhere, and a virtual desktop gives them Windows, which is exactly, <laughs> it's exactly what they don't want. Um, so, so here's, here's where it gets cool. Let, let me actually, let me go to the whiteboard and show you this. All right, so check this out. Amazon Web Services has this thing that they call VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. Gives you total control of the network elements of your environment. So you get the, the network modification here in the Amazon Web Services world, right? So here's your servers, all that running inside of there. They have another product called Direct Connect. It integrates with this. What it is, is the ability to connect from data center X. There's a whole bunch of data centers that they allow, but data center X into the Amazon Web Services world. Now, the reason that's awesome is because nobody knows where these are, they're all hidden away, they're secure, all that kind of stuff. Well, Data Center X, you could go put your own stuff in there or, or whatever you want to do in that, or, or here's where I'm going, here's your office down here in Eugene, where you used to have all your local servers running, that was, that was the yesteryear, right? Well, you got one gigabit per second connectivity here, one gigabit per second uh, connectivity here. I mean, it's not too far fetched. You see these internet connections going faster and faster and faster. And the cost of this could be offset by this fact. Shut these servers down, tear down your local infrastructure here, start spinning up servers in the cloud that you have access to through this high speed connection. Now you can have not only two servers, but 200 servers because now you're in the virtual world where you can just spin up servers on a whim, uh, use auto scaling, grow them or shrink them as you need to and you've now replaced your local infrastructure with an Amazon Web Services virtual infrastructure. So does that make sense? Yeah, that really did. That was really interesting. So what do we want to take away to be for viewers of NuggetCast today? What do you want people leaving the episode knowing about AWS? Mm. Even if you're a local IT guy that cares nothing about web services, Amazon, the cloud, that kind of thing, it would behoove you to start knowing what's there, what's possible with it, because I have a feeling over the next five, at most 10 years, you're gonna see things radically change in the IT landscape. How cool is it that we live in an age where regardless of what happens to our local servers, all our data can be safe and secure thanks to services like AWS. Thank you, Jeremy. So let's wrap it up for this episode. Remember, you can contact us with topics you'd like to see us cover in future episodes by contacting us right here. And remember to take a look through our library of past shows. So, so many fun topics for you to learn about. 
We'll see you next month, but remember, protect and back up all your data through tools like AWS, as you never know what evil villains may be waiting to destroy your data. Destroy them, catch them on fire! I really want you to burn building down, but start from server, because if servers are gone, all of their plans will be foiled! Foil. It's like foil on my wall. Yeah, foil, it will be foiled. <laughs> Jeremy Chiara, welcome to Nuggetcast. Thanks. Burn them, it will be awesome! Yes! But I don't want you to let me down. Because you know what happened to the last time somebody let me down. No, I blew them up! Do you remember when Garth was blown up? He did survive, I know it was bad. Okay, so, my Aunt Hilda is calling, I mean, it is time for me to go do evil things upstairs. I mean, I'm not in basement, I'm in garage. I mean, I'm in secret lair. It is time for me to do evil things to evil people. No. I will do evil things to good people, because I am evil, and I will take over if they were. Just stop talking to me, and go do your job. I need to sharpen my horns. My horns are getting dull. Look at this. Look at my horn. It is getting all squishy.